talking a little bit about the benefits of a thankful heart. There are so many benefits when you keep your heart thankful before God. Let's turn to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter this morning. Deuteronomy 6. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Okay. Well, actually, let's read from verse 4 first. Hear, O Israel, or hear, church, the Lord your God is one, God, one Lord, the only Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind and heart and with your entire being and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you this day, notice it's not a suggestion, it's a command, that shall be first in your own minds and hearts, and then you shall whet and sharpen them as to make them penetrate and teach and impress them diligently upon the minds and hearts of your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand and they shall be like frontlets, forehead bands between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. In other words, your very being as a Christian, write them inside of your spirit. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you with great and goodly cities which you did not build, and houses full of all good things which you did not fill, and cisterns hewn out which you did not hew, and vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, and when you eat and are full. Now, this is... The scripture I wanted to get through this morning. When you eat and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord. Beloved, I've seen this over the years. I've watched this scripture fulfilled over the years. I've seen people that were on fire for God. And God blessed them abundantly coming in, going out, jobs, food, everything you could imagine. And then all of a sudden, the things took over the Lord. Are you hearing me? And don't think it can't happen to you nor myself. You have to guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. You have to keep that thankful heart. You're gonna see some benefits here today with this, but listen to these words. Beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. It's good just to reminisce on some of the things, you know. All, look back and you'll see where God has brought you from. Don't stay back there, but look back and be thankful. Because it's easy to start to take the credit yourself. The Bible says here in Deuteronomy 6.12, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of slavery. The truth is, beloved, that some of us do better in times of struggle than we do in times of success. For it is in our struggles that we naturally, instinctively draw closer to the Lord. We seek his face and we search his word for directions and solutions when we're in trouble. We live with an attitude of humility towards God. It's an openness with others. It's like, God, if you don't do this, it'll never get done. We are conscious, conscious rather, of our source, grateful for our source, dependent on our source. But then pride enters. And it, it shows up in just little things that we say. You may say, well, you know, my power, my strength, you know, I'm a, my, uh, I'm a self-made man. Really? Tell me how you did that. Because you needed God to allow you to be conceived. So you're not a self-made man. And you may say, well, my hands have produced us. You know, I've worked hard. Yes, yes, yes. We all work hard and we enjoy the fruit of our labor. Amen? Amen. 
But could I ask you a question? What would you have without God today? Nothing. There's nothing in this world more important than what you have seated in this room. And people listening to me through the internet, YouTube, whatever, there's nothing more important than your relationship with the Lord and being saved. When I came to know Jesus in 77, I had no idea. By the way, that's 1977, not 1877. So, I had no idea what my life was going to be like now. But I can tell you this, I never look back. Just like the day we left Scotland, I made a decision. Unless you make a quality decision to win, beloved, then in reality, you're not desperate enough. Don't forget it. My husband and I stood in that ship and we made a pact together. We didn't know much. Of, we knew God. We, we, we weren't heathen. We, we believed in God, but we never had a personal relationship. But we made a pact together. We spoke to each other words of faith. We didn't know it. But we both agreed we'll never turn back. Amen. And believe me when I tell you, hell and high water came. But we never looked back. And I'm so grateful to God for that. And the benefits of keeping a thankful heart over the years has kept my heart soft before God because I know the rock from whence I was hewn, beloved. I know there's none of this I could ever have done. None of it I could ever have done. Let me just share with you, just for a moment, in memory of, of Pastor Dave this morning. You know, before this church was built, before we we bought our home that we're in now. A man of prayer did something about it. Those of you that knew him, on a Wednesday night, he never missed a prayer meeting. And he would sit under that picture back there. I can still see him seated there. And he would just pray quietly to the Lord all through the prayer meeting. But you see, before we moved into our house, he drove down that area, and we were one of, I think, four houses in there, three or four houses. There was nothing in there. It's completely full now. It's totally built up. There's no, I mean, maybe three or four lots left. But when we bought, there was three or four houses there. We were one of the, we were the second house literally to be built. And my husband would drive his car down there, and he would sit there for hours interceding over that home. And he would say, Lord, if you'll give me that house. Lord, if you'll give me that house. Same thing happened with his job at Chevrolet. He didn't even know God at the time. But God used that company to fulfill my husband's prayer to him. And to get him saved in there. And as he was driving down River Road, he looked over at Chevrolet and he prayed a prayer to God. And he said, Lord, if you'll get me into Chevy, I'll serve you all of my life. Same prayer I prayed the night I got saved. If you'll take this alcohol, I'll serve you all of my life. Every day of my life. Well, my husband got saved in Chevrolet. And Mickey Phillips was right there when it happened. He brought it home to me. Don't think it's little. Let God, little is much when God is in it. Amen. Stay thankful to God. Take, stay grateful to God for the little things. Did my husband have any idea that his salvation, these guys that were praying for him and Chevy, would have brought me in and built this church? Hello, there's no way. So he always prayed and believed and he sat in front of that house for a long time. And he kept saying to me over and over, we, do, you think, do you think God will give us this house? I said, Dave, it's the desire of your heart. He said, I know, but you know, can we afford it? And that's the truth. 
Can we afford it? Well, at the price they were asking, it was really quite up there out of our budget. But guess what? God had a plan. And I'm talking about being grateful today. When we sit at that Thanksgiving table this Thursday, beloved, be grateful. Be grateful and thankful for what God has done in your life. And when the time was right, God opened the door for that home. And through circumstances with the couple that was selling it, we got it for the price we knew we were comfortable with. And from that point, he was driving down Ward Road. Saw a teeny wee sign. You and I would never, I know I'd never have seen it. And it was a tiny wee sign that said, land for sale. Are you kidding me? Land for sale? We were in Shank Street with, you know, 50 people. Well, how are we going to buy land? I'm talking about the benefits of having a thankful heart and thanking God whether you see it or you don't. Well, one thing led to another to another, and the people that sold us the land knew my son-in-law's family, knew they were good people. So that put us in good standing. You see, God uses every seed, every single seed he uses. And we were able to buy this land, which I still shake my head at. I don't know how we did it. And then this building started to go up. I stood in that, that doorway right there. There wasn't a wall, there wasn't a window. It was just, what was it, Carol? Two by fours. And your husband and my husband up in these rafters. And I stood there saying, God, is this really happening? What did I just read to you? Don't ever forget. Don't forget what God's done for you. I'll be honest with you, I, never, I, I, I did not plan to go here today. But I just like to follow the Holy Ghost. Because there's many people in this room today, and you, you know in your heart who you are, you need to start changing your attitude. Come on now, I'm just being honest. And you need to start thanking God for what you have and not complaining about what you don't have. I remember distinctly all those years ago standing at that door looking at this shell and I was bawling like a baby. And I said, God... I thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you. And this church began, began to take, take form. And what I had already saw in the spirit began to manifest in the flesh. I hope you heard what I just said. Because if you can't see it inside, you'll never see it on the outside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the Lord your God, the Bible says, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. You don't have a thing unless he has given it to you. Well, I work, I work hard and I work, 20, I work 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I know all that. But if he didn't give you your health, how could you do it? Everything, everything we have is in the source of knowing who Jesus is. Not only that, but knowing who we are in Christ. And where are we? We're seated in heavenly places. We might be in this world, beloved, but we're not of it. Are you hearing me today? So I'm asking you a question today. Do you... Take a moment to give thanks before you eat. Now, I know most of us do on a Thursday, this Thursday rather, Thanksgiving. I know that. But just every, every time you eat, do you give a, just you would take a moment to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, had, I was out last Sunday for dinner. And this Was it Sunday? When was it? I don't, no, it was during the week. And, and, I, and we, I was with someone and we had bowed our heads and prayed. And this complete stranger this gentleman came up to us at the end and said, it was so nice 
to see you thanking God. You don't know who you're affecting. You have no idea. So I want to ask you then, do you remember when the home you're living in and the car that you're driving right now were a dream in your heart? Just a dream. Do you remember when you prayed for those things? Or do you take it all for granted? Or worse than that, do you think you did it? You deserve it. You should have the credit for it. Well, if you feel that way, beloved, it's a dangerous place to be. You need to think about a man called Nebuchadnezzar. At the peak of his success, he said these words, is not the mighty Babylon that I have built? And while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, the kingdom is departed from thee. Thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And he crawled around like a madman with the spit off his beard for a long time. It's a sobering story that ends with him, thank God, turning back to God and saying, saying these words, listen, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. So my question to you today is, if you can remember and be grateful, do it. Remember and be grateful for everything he's ever done for you. But you might be saying, well, you know, other people have things to be grateful for. What do I have to be grateful for? Well, I've got a scripture for you too. Perhaps you don't feel too thankful today. Perhaps there's situations in your life, and I don't make light of that. Maybe there's some serious situations, health-wise or, or financially or your family or your children, something that you're facing, as we, we just watched the movie, you're facing your own giant. I don't make light of that. I don't make light of that for one moment. But you, you have to believe that there is going to be benefits for you coming through this situation if you will give thanks to God. Paul said in Philippians 4.11, and this is what I want to get to you if you're feeling this way today. He said, I have learned how to be content. It was a learning process, beloved. He wasn't always jumping up and, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, this is the day. No, he had to learn to be content. While they were taking chunks of meat out of his back with beatings and scourgings, while he was in the jail cells with the rats chewing at his feet, when he was hungry, he said, I've learned how to abound and I've learned how to abase. I have learned how to be thankful. And the more you look back on what God's done for you, beloved, you'll see as Paul saw, and you'll be able to say, I have learned to be content in whatsoever state I am in. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. I know how to enjoy plenty. I know how to go hungry and still give them thanks. The secret of facing every giant, so to speak, the secret of facing every situation, whether you're well-fed or you're hungry, is what Paul remembered. I have strength for all things in Christ. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. His sufficiency. My sufficiency is enough for you. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for you, his word says. In Philippians 4, 6, we read, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Beloved, this thanksgiving, let's look at our hearts. Are they thankful? Are they, are they praising God? One of the things that, that I received more than anything in that movie was at the very beginning of the movie we watched Friday night. It was about the young lad that, that couldn't throw the ball. Now, again, please, all of you football fans, forgive me because I know nothing about football. Zero with the rimp off. I know nothing. 
So all I knew was he was supposed to throw the ball a certain um, length, right? And he couldn't even come close to that length. And he said out of his mouth to, the, to his coach, he said, I will, he's, no, first of all, he had the ball and he threw it. And sure enough, he didn't, you know, he, he didn't get it as far as he wanted to get it. I know this, I'm not saying all this right, but I think you're getting the gist of it. So he couldn't get it far enough over the, the net and what have you. And so after it was all over the, the, the what, did I say something funny? Well, anyway, I said the net, okay. Well, the goal post, is that right? All right, did I get it right, the goal post? Okay, so anyway, the, the, he said to, the, to his, the, his mentor there, the, the, the coach, he said, he says, uh, I knew I couldn't do that. I knew I couldn't do it. And he answered him back, the coach answered him back with these words. I wrote it down. Whatever you believe, son, your actions will follow. And that's what I got out of it at the very beginning of that movie. And see, it goes into everything that we live by. Whatever you believe, your actions will follow. If, you, if your actions are not following, you really don't believe it. I received this 38 years ago through my mentor, Kenneth E. Hagan, one of the greatest storytellers in the, in, the, in the body of Christ at that time. And I would lay on the floor for hours listening to Kenneth Hagan's teachings, and that's probably why I'm a storyteller, because I know that anointing came in me, but I, I would lie there and listen. His whole life was about believing and acting if we believe we are thankful to God, then we act on it. We say, I'm thankful to God. I'm grateful to God. I'm, I'm giving God the praise. And you might be looking at zero in your bank account. You might be looking at wondering where your breakfast is coming from. But if you're giving them thanks through this whole situation, you're notifying the devil that you have your faith in a God that's greater than him. Amen. Amen. And so now, Kenneth Hagin's laying in his bed and he's dying at 16 years old. He'd already had the last rites from the Catholic Church. He had the, 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 the other ministers come in. He had them all, the, the rabbis, everybody. Everybody prayed for him. Everybody came out of the room saying to his mother and father, you may as well say your goodbyes. But I could tell you this story verbatim, what he said because I heard it a thousand times without fear of exaggeration. He opened his Bible to Mark eleven twenty three, 23, to the 11th chapter, and he came to the 23rd verse. Whosoever shall say unto that mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but will believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He looked at that. He said, if this is true, he said, if this is really true, he says, then I'm healed. I am healed. And then the next thought came to him, well, if I'm healed, why am I lying in this bed? Now listen to carefully. He hadn't walked in months. There was no strength in his legs. His blood was orange. He was down to no weight at all. He was like a walking skeleton ready to die. But he got a hold of a scripture and believed it and acted on it. And he started to put one foot out of the bed, another leg out of the bed, fell down a few times, got back up because there was no strength in his limbs. Started to walk, holding on to everything. Kept saying, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. He saw his mountain as sickness. Your mountain could be anything. Speak to it in Jesus' name. And he finally crawled down the stairs Walked into the kitchen, and his mother just went against the wall. She actually thought it was the ghost of her son. 
And when she realized it was Kenneth Hagin, her son in the flesh, she said, what, what, what? He said, Mother, I want my breakfast. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. And you see, at the end of that movie, that young man started to program himself with he could do it, he could do it, he could do it. He, and I'm not talking about, about all this, you know, oh, junk. I'm talking about be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, what, through the word of God. And he started to see that he could do it, see that he could do it. And of course, at the end, I can give away the movie, sorry, but I have to. So, you know, he threw it and he won the game with one second or something like that to, huh? He kicked it, sorry, kicked it, kicked it. There you go. Well, I was so intent in the numbers on the screen because it said it was three seconds, two seconds, and I just wanted to see him win. So it was, he kicked it. Are you following me? Are you getting something here? Aren't you glad you can laugh? I don't know what I'm saying half the time, but God does. Aren't you glad that God knows what I'm saying? You see, King David knew what I'm talking about. The Bible says that he pitched his tent in the land of hope. Don't ever lose your hope. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen, do we have a thankful heart this morning? Can we say, thank you, Jesus, and mean it? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna tell you, how important this is. The very quality of your life, beloved, the very quality of your life, whether you love it or you hate it, is based upon how thankful you are towards God. Looking at the same flower, some people complain that roses have thorns. Others rejoice that thorns have roses. You see, it all depends on your perspective. This is the only life you will ever have before you enter into a place called eternity. If you will find joy, you must first find thankfulness. The only one who, who can be thankful is the person that truly thankful is the person that knows how much God has done for them through his son, Jesus Christ. And that person loves much and enjoys much. But the unappreciative soul is always miserable. You ever notice that saying is true. Misery loves company. We all, you know, when we're in that kind of state, we want to get our little candle out, light all the candles, the candles and sing happy depression day to me. Me, myself, and I can't get out the door fast enough to go tell somebody how miserable you are. I had a lady come up to me this morning and she said, how are you feeling now, Pastor? I said, I'm, I'm fine, I'm healed. And I was walking through that door, I said, excuse me, before I forget, I said, if I, I, if I, was, I couldn't be any better if I was twins. <laughs> I wanted to confess that. It makes me feel good. So I'm a twin, split 55 is, is 25, 25, 27 and a half, there you go. <laughs> Let's give Jesus a big hand. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the, the, ingrate, gra, the ungrateful heart, we need to repent, beloved, of our ingratitude. We're living in a wounded world that needs special attention. Special attention. This world, there's so many heart and souls that need to know what we know so they can be grateful the way we are. Hallelujah. Be thankful for what you have in the present. Today. That's why it's called a present because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. The moment we become grateful, we actually begin to ascend into the presence of God. 
Because the word of God says we enter his gates with thanksgiving. As you do this, beloved, your attitudes will ultimately, ultimately change your circumstance. You will begin to change. When you are looking for a future, beloved, you'll never find it continually looking in your past. Okay. I've, I don't have much longer here. And I, it's just the time has gone, but I want to get a few points across. Happiness is determined by who you are, not... No, wait a minute. Happiness is determined by who you are, not by what you possess. Okay? I've seen people in my lifetime that ha didn't have two pennies to rub together, happier than people I know are wealthy. Because wealth doesn't do it. A thankful heart is not only the greatest virtue, but it's the parent of all other virtues. Beloved Americans today, when we give God thanks, let's see some of these benefits. First of all, you live in a country that was founded by Christians. You live in a country where up to this point and in Jesus' name, this generation and generations to come, should the Lord tarry, will be able to walk into churches in America and give thanks to God. Are you hearing me? We have freedom to pray over our children. We have freedoms that we should never take for granted. We have roofs over our heads. We have beds to sleep in. Oh, pastor, come on. That, really? Do you know how many millions of people in this world would love to have your problems today? Oh, my bed was so cold last night. Really? Buy an electric blanket. They're on sale everywhere. You don't have to wait till after Christmas to do anything anymore. Just go. I said, no, we, we take it for granted. We can go out of here, go to a store, get an electric blanket. Even if you don't have heat in your house, stay in bed for a day and praise God in the heat. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, you mean it's okay to stay in bed? I'm not talking about being sick and staying in bed. I'm just talking about just, lay, see, I've got to explain everything. Laying there and thanking God for a heated blanket. You say, are you crazy? Well, I'll tell you something. I might be a nut, but this nut's hanging on the right tree. That's all I can say. Hallelujah. Next one, you have food to eat. The truth is we've got too much food to eat. Moving right along. <laughs> we have water to drink. We have clothes to wear. We have cars to drive. We have a building to worship in that was built by love. By prayer, we have it all. But in many cases, beloved, we have everything we need without the most important thing, contentment. The greatest wealth you'll ever have is contentment with little. Contentment with little. You know, I was thinking about the 10 lepers and how Jesus on his way to Jerusalem touched all those lepers Every one of them were healed. But only one came back to say thanks. And you know what he did? He actually, went, if you study your, the word, you'll see that he actually fell in the dirt and held on to the feet of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to ask you a question. Well, actually, let me just say this to you. If, if I was to do something for you, you know, and, and you, would, you would say, thank you, I would answer, what would we answer? We'd say, you're welcome. Jesus never answered. Jesus asked a question. He said, where are the other nine? I healed 10. Where's the other nine? So this question I'm giving to every one of us, myself included, are we a nine or a one? Are we part of the? Are we part of that nine? 
that didn't take the time to thank God? Or are we the one that came back and fell at his feet and said, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Gratitude that is never expressed expresses ingratitude. Think about that for a wee while. You'll get it. You'll get it. You choose to be thankful. You choose to keep going and forget the source. Oh, I'm healed. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, I don't need to be in church this Sunday. Come on now. Getting to meddling now. Oh, well, God sees God sees what I'm doing this week with my finances. Really? Put him first. I thought maybe that was Jesus. <laughs> but, but I just saw the shadow. Put him first. <laughs> Glory to God. I guess I'm closing, right? <laughs> Aren't you glad for a sense of humor? Hallelujah. Grateful people have a strong belief in God. Now listen carefully to what I'm going to tell you. Even when things may not appear to be going well, and let's be honest, we can say it this way, when all hell breaks loose, out of weakness we are made strong, the Bible says. It's all about your attitude determining your altitude. You see, beloved, worry doesn't take the sorrow from tomorrow. Worry takes the strength from today. You ever heard that old song? I used to sing it years ago. Here we go, singing preacher. No need to worry about tomorrow. It's all in the master's hand. No need to worry about your future. It will be as he commands. Whether the day be stormy, whether the day be fair, no need to worry, no need to hurry, for you'll be right there. Can we sing it? No need to worry about tomorrow, for it's all in the master's hand. No need to worry about the future, it will be as he has planned. Whether the day be stormy, whether the day be fair, no need to worry, no need to hurry, for he'll be right there. Give yourself a big hand, hallelujah. <laughs> well, I had a lot, and I, you, I see all these pages? Look, one, look, look at this, look at this. I guess I'm ready for next Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. But I cannot <clears throat> close this message until I read to you one of the greatest stories I've ever heard. This is something I wrote down. I thought, what time was it, Lord? Seven o'clock this morning. I was listening to a minister of the gospel, and he told this true story. And when I don't take shorthand, but I'm telling you, I did this morning. I got a pen and pencil, a pen and paper, so fast, I couldn't even believe I got the story. At least I got the most of it because it'll change your life, it changed mine. His name was Ed, it's a true story. And he lived in Florida. <clears throat> Every Friday night, at the same time, same pier and same beach, Ed would take a bucket of shrimp and stand at the edge of the pier. Within moments, he was surrounded by seagulls. And one shrimp at a time, he would throw them out and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, as each seagull grabbed one of the shrimp. Thank you, thank you, thank you. People thought he was cuckoo. He was mad. He did this same time, same pier, same beach, for 31 years until the day he died. His name was Eddie Wickenbacker. Now, if you can see, this is all my handwriting. 
I did this this morning by the grace of God because I know God wanted you to hear this. He did it for 31 years until the day he died. His name was Eddie Wickenbacker. He received the Congressional Medal of Honor for his service during World War II. For 24 days, he and a group of other servicemen were adrift on a raft at sea. They had no food, nothing. And on the eighth day, some of them about to die, they all said, we're going to pray together now. And they prayed, and they asked God for a miracle. Eddie fell asleep. He had pulled his cap over his face. Within minutes, a seagull landed on his cap. And he prayed a fast prayer. God, let me catch him. God, let him catch. You ever tried to catch a seagull? And he was able to catch him. And humanely and quickly, he broke his neck. That seagull saved every life on that raft. They ate everything they could eat of that seagull, except the intestines. They used that for bait to catch fish. Every one of those men survived. So Eddie, grateful to that seagull, fed as many as he could for the rest of his life, saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I wrote this, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, take, eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. I don't know about you, beloved, but I'll never look at a seagull the same way again. And, it, and instead of shooing them away on that beach, I'm just going to be honest with you. The only thing I ever cared about, I didn't care about giving them little tidbits and stuff, but I didn't want them flying over the hair. <laughs> but now I don't care. I'll never look at a seagull the same way again. And, get, and guess what? They've now become my friends. Are you hearing me today? Our Lord gave his life that you and I could survive. Do you know that story? Yeah. Yes. To all, yes, to so many. That's... That's what I'm talking about. And that's what I'm just saying. And when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, yes, when the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart about him giving his life, Jesus gave his life for us. Amen. Is that awesome? Is that awesome? So, beloved, I'm not going to keep you any longer today. I just want to wish you all a very, very happy Thanksgiving. A blessed thank you, a blessed Thanksgiving, and, and happy birthday thanks be to me, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, and so, I was going to go hug the baby, but she disappeared. She's not there. <laughs> I've so much to be thankful for, and so do you. And what a beautiful day. You know, I never get into anything. I, I have to tell this story, though. I've got to. I never got into this, but I was going to tell you all about the benefits. Maybe I should do a part two with this. But all the benefits of being thankful. We could do that, couldn't we? So I'll leave that story till the next one. <laughs> You'll get a good laugh at my next story. Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. That's it. I'll do a, I'm going to do a part two, okay, of being thankful. Father, we are so grateful. We are so thankful. Lord, have your way. Have your way in all of our lives this day. Let us remember your goodness and be thankful this Thanksgiving. Let us remember, Lord God. Let us remember you and what Jesus done. As we stand to our feet this morning, beloved, I want to pray over you. If you do not know Jesus, I just want to make sure, just raise your hand right now to me saying, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. I'm not sure if I'm saved. 
I know you're saved, beloved. I know you're saved. Is there anyone else that would, would say yes, maybe for the first time, to know Jesus as their Savior? Okay. Then the next prayer I'm going to pray right now is I'm praying for all of you. Father, I thank you now and I give you the praise now for every person within the sound of my voice. I pray for healing. I pray for, for deliverance. I pray for prosperity. I pray for all of your goodness towards the children of men in this house today. And I give you the thanks, Lord, that you're not a man that you can lie, but you will provide every need we have. And so now I speak the word of God over you. The Lord has blessed you, beloved. The Lord has kept you. The Lord has made his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord has lifted up his countenance upon you and the Lord has given you peace. And in Jesus' name, go with him because he most certainly is going with you. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hug at least two people. Tell them happy Thanksgiving.